hello everyone in today's video we will see the behavior of heat capacity in solids through day by model previously we have seen the classical and the einstein model now in this model we will rectify all the einstein deficiencies to move further closer towards our experimental plot so let's start with the assumptions so they will assume that lattice vibrations are multiple superposition of normal modes of vibration so basically here so all the atoms are interacting with the other atoms in their vicinity so now an other assumption that is in contrast with the einstein that is the frequencies with which each atom is vibrating or oscillating are different so these are the two contrasting assumptions of the debye so previously we have taken this energy where we have uh, taken the omega to be same for all the atoms so we have in there one mode of vibration but now here the system having n atoms in 3d lattice are having 3n so these three factor we will later know this is a factor of polarization so we know the disturbance or the vibrations are represented by wave so wave is a flow of energy in the form of quantas of vibration that is phonons so k is a wave vector so here we are having the quantum system so here our k is quantized so it is taking certain discrete values so for a particular k value there exist a corresponding omega that means we have for one k there is a one mode of vibration so for n such omegas there are n normal modes of vibration so first starting the derivation with having the frequency distribution function represented by g omega so for d omega range the number of modes that is dn is equal to g omega into the range that is d omega so we know a plane wave is represented by simple expression of a exponential k dot r the where is k is a wave vector and r is a position vector so this is a simple expression now using the direct lattice periodicity in which after a translation of l we are moving the lattice through a translation vector certain translation vector wave returns to its initial position so this gives us the condition when we apply this condition into this wave expression this will give us this condition it cancels out we are left with iota k dot r is equal to 1 since this is a imaginary power so we can rewrite this as k dot r plus iota sin k dot r is equal to 1 so so we are having on the right hand side only the real part so our imaginary part should go to zero so for our real part for our real that is k dot r to be 1 so our this dot product should be equal to 2 pi this should be a multiple of 2 pi n where n can take 0 1 2 values so all the values and plus and minus also so it will take both positive and negative values and now our translation vector we know this is l and here the k vector let us take this k vector to be in k i cap so this will become k l if we do the k dot r because here the translation vector is l i cap and k is k i cap so this becomes k l which is equal to 2 pi n so this is our quantum condition so we get this condition of k l is equal to 2 pi n so our k can be written as 2 pi by l 
so it's a multiple of 2 pi by L so the smallest value smallest value of k will be two pi l so it's basically a multiple of two pi by l so if we have one d lattice so it's a series of atoms so so there are the k points we can find the one k point within this 2 pi by l length so 2 pi by l length we can find the one k value similarly when we move on to the 2d space these points are arranged in 2d so one k point is enclosed in a square of side 2 pi by l so the area of 2 pi by l whole square is enclosing key point similarly in 3d this one k point is enclosed in a small cube of side 2 pi by l so one k point is enclosed in the volume of 2 pi by l whole cube so moving on to the next so we are having the solid so we are having a solid of length L. The whole solid is of length L is a cube. So, so volume of whole cube is L cube. Now the day were considered considered a sphere of radius k and closing all the k points in it so we have one sphere of k radius enclosing all the k points in it so each k point corresponds to e omega value corresponding omega and each values of omega gives us a one mode of vibration so we get the number of modes of vibration through this k value considerations so so we can find the volume of sphere having all the k points in it which is equal to 4 by 3 pi k cube k is the radius so we know the volume of a space enclosing single k point so we have seen that it is equal to 2 pi by L whole cube so the smallest unit in which a single k point is enclosed is 2 pi by L cube so we can find out the number of k points in it which will give us the number of modes volume taken by all the k points is 4 by 3 pi k cube divided by volume taken by the single k point so it's 2 pi by l whole cube so number of modes is equal to this so i will solve this so we get this after solving we get this 1 by 6 pi square this is k cube we can put this l cube to be a volume of solid so v so these are the number of modes capital n we can replace this k with this expression so our number of total number of modes becomes v omega cube 6 pi square v cube 6 pi square n v into v cube so this is so this value of omega is a day by frequency this is the maximum frequency of the system now we are going to follow the same procedure that we have followed in the classical and Einstein model so let's start with 
finding the average energy of each atom so average energy is denoted by e bar omega if we have to find out the total energy then we have to multiply this with the frequency distribution multiply by average energy so we have to integrate in whole the frequency range so frequency range is varying from 0 to omega d that is a maximum frequency the system can take so this omega d is a day by frequency that we have seen in the previous slide so before we should know this we know the average energy of an harmonic oscillator so we will take the same that we have got in the Einstein model so we will first we have to find out the g omega the frequency distribution so how do we find we know that this number of modes in d omega range is given by g omega d omega and we know n is equal to v k cube by 6 pi square so we will just have to differentiate this number of modes with respect to omega so we can find out the g omega so we have n is equal to v k cube by 6 pi square so dn by d omega so we have to differentiate this expression with respect to omega so this v is constant 6 pi square is constant but k here is is varying with omega so we have to differentiate k with respect to omega and here we know that using the expression k is equal to omega by v here v is velocity so dk by d omega is equal to 1 by v so we will put this expression into this so we got this dn by d omega v 6 pi square k 3k square into 1 by v and replacing the k with this expression of omega by v whole square 1 by v so so g omega or frequency distribution function which is equal to dn by d omega is equal to v by v omega square by 2 pi v cube so this is our frequency distribution function so now we can find out the integral so this is our integral to find out the total energy of the system now here we sh we will add one more factor that is 3 this factor of 3 is because of the three components of polarization so two transverse and one longitudinal so here uh, this is one component that is moving parallelly to the wave and other two are in perpendicular direction so we have three components so this three factor is because of the polarization so we can now write all the expressions into this so this is three so we have find out the g omega so we will put the g omega v omega square 2 pi square v cube and this the average energy which is equal to h omega h omega exponential h omega k t minus 1 d omega so this is our polarization factor so this is our g omega the frequency distribution function this is our average energy so we will integrate this so let's substitute let's take x is equal to h omega kt and so taking out all the 
constants 3 b 2 pi square v cube h cross and so this omega cube d omega by e h omega k t minus 1 so we have to find out the d omega which is equal to k t by h cross dx so we will put the value for omega and d omega write the expression for total energy in terms of x now so this will becomes x d so our x d so our x d is equal to h omega d k d so omega cube can be written as h k t whole cube x cube this t omega can be written as k t h cross d x and in denominator e x minus 1 so this we got this expression in terms of x now we will divide this into two cases first for low temperature range so for low temperature our x which is equal to h omega by kt become very large so this e x minus 1 can be written as e x so our expression so this is a constant so our integral this 0 to x d so our upper limit changes to infinity and now integral this can be written as this e x minus 1 can be written as e x dx so this integral changes to this form so so when we solve this whole integral this comes out to be pi 4 by 15 this we want the solution for this whole integral you can write me in the comment box i will provide in another video so so for the time being we are using the value direct value so our xd is equal to h omega d by kt and this xd this can be written as theta d by t where theta d is equal to h omega d by k this is a day by temperature so we can substitute this using this expression this expression into this so firstly we have to rearrange this little bit so to cancel out this h cross so we will take out this as and separating this with cube and single power this t4 pi 4 15 so we will cancel out this so putting in here the value of k by h cross so k by h cross can be written as omega d by theta d so we can find this out using this expression so we will have to replace this ratio with omega d by theta d so this is omega d by theta d whole cube t4 and pi 4 by 15 so now we will use the expression of omega d whole cube is equal to this is a day by frequency which is equal to 6 pi square into number of total number of moles divided by volume of solid into v cube so we will use this expression into this total energy expression so we will use this omega d expression so our energy expression comes out to be k 6 pi square n by v v cube theta d whole cube t4 temperature to the power fourth power temperature and pi 4 by 15 so this v cube will cancel out this v cube 6 pi square with pi square and this v with v so this 3 and this 3 with 5 
so our energy expression is 3 so 3 by 5 in k and this t k power 4 and this theta d q by 4 so this is the expression so we can find the cv by differentiating it with respect to temperature so our expression comes out as 4 t3 theta d3 pi 4 so this is 3 4 is so 12 12 by 5 pi 4 and k t to the power so this is t to the power 3 by theta d3 so this is our specific heat at low temperature so it is proportional to t3 so now taking the other half that is for high temperature range so let's do the other half for high temperature our x which is equal to h cross omega kt is very small when we do the expansion of exponential so we can neglect the higher order terms because x is small so we can write this approximately as 1 plus x so in the denominator of the integrals can be written as 1 plus x minus 1 this plus minus cancels out this can be written as x so our integral of this form 0 to x dx cube e x minus 1 dx can be written as 0 to x d x cube this can be written as x dx so this is 0 to x d x square dx so this is x d cube by 3 so our energy expression comes up to be 3 v h cross 2 pi square v q k t h cross 4 the integral the value of integral is x d whole cube by 3 here x d is equal to h omega d k t so we will put the value of x d so we will get our expression to be 1 by 3 h by k d cube omega d cube so so we will cancel out this with this so we are left with this h with this so 3 2 pi square v cube k t so this 3 will cancel out with this 3 so we remove the 3 from here so this is omega d cube so we can now put the value of omega d cube which is equal to 6 pi square n by v v cube so this is v 2 pi square v cube k t this can be written as 6 pi square total number of modes divided by volume v cube so we cancel out v cube with v cube and the volume with volume pi square and this 3 so we are left with 3 n k t so so we get the familiar expression which we have found out in the classical as well as Einstein model as well. So we can find out the CV by simply differentiating it with respect to T. So our expression is 3NK. So this is a classical value we all know. So let's get to the curve. So we know so here the long dash you can see the day by model which is very close to the experimental plot now so for lower range 
और लोअर रेंज तो फॉर लोअर टेम्परेचर आर सी वी इज प्रपोर्शनल टू टी क्यूब एंड फॉर हाई टेम्परेचर दिस इज अप्रोचिंग दी थ्री एन के कॉन्स्टेंट वैल्यू सो दिस इज डे बाय मॉडल so which is very well coinciding with the experiment plot so this is it for today if you have any doubts related to this topic you can write me in the comment box and thank you for watching this video